Hello, friends, and welcome to the new episode of r slash I don't work here, lady. I'm afraid the prophecy was true, and the day has come when people cannot tell the difference between a blue shirt and a black shirt. And our first little warm-up story. Hello, my name is... Background. I work in a mall at a popular technology retailer with fruit as a logo on our work t-shirts. Generally, when employees go on break outside of the store, we do our best to cover up the logo with another shirt or sweater to avoid being asked to answer questions or work off the clock. Because it's summer and it's sweltering hot where I live, most of my coworkers will settle for covering the logo with their hair if it's long enough, a label, or a sticker. On my break last week, I decided to head upstairs to a women's intimate apparel store to do some shopping. It's hot and I hadn't brought a second shirt to cover, so I just took a blank white label and used it to cover my logo. Literally, just a blank white rectangle. Nothing written on it. I'm poking around and decide to put a bra that I'd picked out back on the rack. I squeeze by another customer and say, pardon me, I'm just going to put this back here. The girl turns to me and asks, bra in hand, oh, can you please grab me one of these in a 34A? I reply that I don't work there and point out the sales associates on the other side of the store stocking merchandise. Customer gets a confused look on her face, but you're dressed in the same uniform and wearing a name tag. The employees were wearing black tank tops with lanyards for their name badges. I was wearing a long sleeve blue t-shirt and a blank white label on my chest. Nothing written on it. Oh well. At least she wasn't rude. And our second story. Man doesn't know how to use a turnstile and blames me for it. So this happened yesterday on New Year's Eve, and I still can't believe how rude and incredibly stupid this guy was. So to preface this, I'm a really short and young looking girl. I'm 21 years old, but only 4 foot 11, and most people think I'm about 16 when they first meet me, which makes this story all the more baffling. So I live close to Vienna, where on New Year's Eve we have Silver Spad which consists of, I think, 12 stations with different live acts all across downtown and more or less a big fireworks show at midnight. It's pretty neat and sadly pretty full, but there are also no bathrooms around anywhere, so basically you're stuck outside the whole time. I went there with a friend and my little sister, and after the fireworks, both of them needed to use the bathroom, so we went on our merry way to get the only subway station that had an acceptable bathroom. I didn't have to go, so I decided to wait outside, like two meters to the left of the turnstile. I hope that's the right word. I had to Google it. It was a big group of middle-aged drunk men, probably like 45 or something. They came along and started pressing themselves against the turnstile, setting the alarm off and annoying everyone. It took them some time to see the sign asking for 90 cents to get inside, but they didn't realize that also said that the machine can't give out change. So this stupid man in the story apparently had never used a turnstile because he put in one euro and waited a few seconds for his change that didn't come out, while a huge queue was forming behind him. Before he decided to turn the whole thing with his hand one time, then lean against it, it obviously didn't work because he had already turned it one time and got really angry while the people behind him told him to hurry up. So he put in another euro and finally managed to get through the damn thing and even though this ordeal might have only taken two or three minutes, it felt like hours at this point. Everyone was staring at him. He then decided to not walk into the bathroom, but make eye contact with me and ask me, what the F are you looking at? I was visibly confused and pointed at myself to make sure he was talking to me. After all, literally everyone was looking at him in annoyance. That's when he got really mad and shouted, you stupid B, you should have helped, not just looked on. Do your effing job. I just paid two euros because this thing doesn't work. I just looked at him, baffled. I stood there in a huge winter coat, scarf, boots, glittery silver eyeshadow on my face, while generally looking like a 16-year-old getting shouted at by a drunk older man. So I keep eye contact with him and say, do you think I work here? Just to make sure. But he seemed to not hear me because there were so many people walking past him and I wasn't exactly shouting. So he kept on complaining about how I was the reason he had to pay more before I interrupted him and said loudly this time, look, I don't work here, but even if I did, it wouldn't be my fault that you're too stupid to use a turnstile. I don't usually get loud with people, but at this point, there were so many people looking at the guy and me that I didn't know what else to do. 
He just stood there for a second while I half expected him to walk out towards me because he looked like he was fuming. But I guess he then realized that he would have to pay a third time then, so he just shouted back, How the F would I know that? Thankfully, that was when my friend and my sister came back and we just turned around and went on our merry way, with the guy still standing there. I actually kind of wished that he had walked out again to confront me, so he would have had to pay again. But I also don't know how I would have reacted to being confronted by him without a barrier in between us, considering that he was considerably bigger and drunker than me. So I was thankful to just get out of there. Everyone knows that when you're drunk, the way to use a turnstile is to attempt to jump over it and either injure yourself or bask in the drunken glory of defeating the turnstile. With possible arrest. And our third story. You want an appointment with me? Sure. This happened a few months ago, but the problem had been going on for years. Every other month, I would get a text message from someone asking for a doctor or to make an appointment. I started off immediately informing them that they got the wrong number. Hey, it happens. When it started happening more frequently, I dealt with the minor annoyance by trying to have some fun. Is Dr. Lee available? Me. There's no Dr. Lee here, only Dr. Wong. Dr. Wong number. It was kind of funny until the volume of messages started increasing and I started getting annoyed. A quick Google search led me to the clinic's page. Their number was indeed easily mistakable for mine. Theirs ends with a 013, mine with a 073, and the font used certainly made it worse. So I called the clinic to inform them of this problem and that they needed to do something about it. Change the font, spell the numbers out, or even change their number. I just want the messages to stop. The lady just brushed me off and said there was nothing she could do. So I asked to speak to someone in charge, but was denied. She told me to change my number or just deal with it. So here comes the part where I dealt with it. After an odd month of peace, I received several messages over a week asking to make an appointment. Hi, I would like to make an appointment, please. Me. Sure. The next available slot is Friday at 10. Would that work for you? I made very sure never to claim that I represented the clinic. If anyone asked for a specific doctor, I would say there's no such person here, and if they did ask for the clinic, I'd inform them they got the wrong number. Basically, I had myself covered and tried to have everyone's appointment at the same time. When Friday came around, I received several angry replies from those people and a call from the clinic. Messages went generally like this. You're a terrible person. Why would you do this to waste my time? Why did you pretend to be the clinic? Me. I'm sorry, ma'am, but I run a PC repair service except I don't take appointments via SMS, nor is it my personal number listed. I was expecting you at 10, but you didn't show. If you looked at your message, you never asked if I was the clinic, and I never claimed to be. And the call went like this, CL, clinic lady, CL. Hi, who's this? Why did you pretend to be us and arrange for all these appointments? Me. I called you months ago, letting you know about this, but you told me to deal with it. So I set appointments up for me to see them. It's not my fault they showed up at your door. Maybe you should change your phone number. I hung up. Sure, I felt a little bad that I made those people travel to the clinic, but I've since stopped receiving the messages from random people, and after checking the clinic site, they now have an online appointment-making system. That's actually pretty evil. But lawful evil, I'd say. And our first story. Congratulations, you were wrong. This past Saturday, I was working on an antique vanity I got last weekend. Halfway through painting it, I realized I didn't have enough paint, so I had to clean up, get changed, go to the Big Blue Home Improvement Store 40 minutes away. Arriving there, it's crazy. Like, there's tons of people here, and it's insane. I get to the paint center, and there are a bunch of people standing there. After a small altercation with a couple of kids, I start talking to the parents of said kids and another man and his teenage daughter. We're discussing the projects we were working on and showing pictures of our projects and generally having a nice conversation while waiting for the service people to help us. As we're talking, another man approaches us and asks where the spray paint is. I tell him, he says thank you and leaves. Not a moment later, a woman walks up and hands me a paint chip. Rude woman, I need a gallon of this and satin. Me, okay, I don't work here so you'll have to wait for one of them gestures to the people behind the paint desk and tries to hand the paint chip back. Rude woman stares at the chip for an uncomfortable amount of time, like enough for me to get antsy. Then she looks back up at me. Rude woman, 
You have to help me. It's your job. At this point, I'm done with this conversation. I told her, I don't work here. I'm not dressed like an employee. I'm wearing jeans, Batman flip-flops, a black t-shirt, and a baseball cap of a college known for their red turkey mascot. I have my pink purse on my shoulder, cell phone in hand. There should be no mistaking me for an employee. And I threw the paint chip on the counter. Me. I don't work here. I turn back to the people I was talking to and the woman storms off. We started joking about how dumb she was and how I obviously work there and how I have to go clean up a mess in aisle three. Just dumb stuff when she comes back. With a manager. Rude woman. There she is. She was rude. Refused to help me and just plain mean. Me. I don't work here. Manager. Ma'am, she doesn't work here. I watched her look me up and down. It finally seemed to click for the lady. She huffed and left. The manager apologized. I got my paint, friend, the wife, and teenage daughter on Facebook, and went home. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video to the end, and I'll see you in the next one.